We've also got baptisms at the end of the service. And just so you know, if anybody here, you may not be on the list that you were to get baptized, but if you, if you feel, if God moves in your life today and you want to get baptized, you just need to know that Scripture said this, there was a, a man who was going along and, and he, uh, he saw that there was water. Now he wasn't the preacher, he was just somebody who just, God had just touched. And he saw water and he said, there's water, what, what prevents me from being baptized? And that was the answer, nothing. So if you feel that way today, I want to just give you the opportunity and know that we want to we wanna meet you on your journey. And God is going to touch you today if you, if you want that. So uh, I'm just going to read a couple of quick scriptures. Um, I should only, for all of our visitors here, just so you know, I should only be about two and a half hours. <laughs> I tried to keep this short. It's usually five hours. Um... I'm going to read just two quick verses, both from the New Living Translation. Uh, I do want to say that it's very special to have um, the Helm family with us today. That is uh, Colin's family. It's good to have you guys with us. Jeremiah, you too. Jeremiah, I'm reading from your book. Um, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 says this. I knew you before I formed you. In your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 1 says, listen to me, all you in distant lands, pay attention. You who are far away, the Lord has called me before my birth. From within the womb, he called me by name. I just want to talk to you for a little while today about choosing destiny. Choosing destiny. Each of us is born with an understanding that we're special. We don't know why. We may not be particularly cute or smart or super talented on an obvious level. But there's something in a child. There's something inside of a child that's born into this world that, that somehow knows that there's something about them that is important. And this, this life that we live, that this life somehow, it matters. And most of us hear this, spend the rest of our lives trying to prove that that is true. Everyone in this room to whatever degree that this may be, but all of us have struggled at one point or another as we search for significance, as we struggle to, to show that we are important. The miracle of God is that he literally makes each of us significant. He, he creates inside of us a purpose. He shapes before us and before we were ever born a destiny that we can grab hold of. A place that he has for us, a, a location for us to inhabit in his kingdom. The problem very often is that many people live and die and never find it. The reality of life is that so many people that we know Live this life frustrated, unfulfilled, 
feeling like there's always something that they, that they have to give, but never quite knowing what it is or how to. The reality is that the reason for that is because God made you and shaped you and molded you and called you by name before you were ever born. Before your, your mother even knew that she carried you, God had a destiny for you. That he had shaped you, you know, whatever, however tall you are, you know. I've got, Adi is, Adi's, Adi's three months old and he's a giant. You know, I, I said, I was teasing the other day and I said, you know, he's, he's got shoulders and he's got biceps and he's three months old. And I said, yeah, he takes after his grandpa. The problem is he takes after that grandpa. See, but God shaped him. God has shaped him. And the reason that my wife gave a word to every child is because she spends hours praying for every one of these babies that we dedicate. And she's looking into the spirit and she's feeling after God and saying, Lord, what is it? What is it that you have in this child? What is the destiny that you shaped this child for? And it doesn't matter how old they are. We had some, we had some kids, you know, that were, that were bigger than babies up here. We had some 12-year-olds and, you know, they're half grown and, and shaven and stuff. See, but the thing is this, guys. Their parents came here and found that this, this church offered that we could, we could dedicate their children. And the parents decided that they wanted that for their kids. It doesn't matter how old somebody is when they get dedicated to the Lord. What matters is that they're dedicated. What I'll tell you right now is that in a way that never was before this day, that, that God is active in these kids' lives in a way that he never has been before. God is moving. And he's bringing those kids that he's already shaped those kids that already have a word over their lives, God is now acting to bring them to the place that that word becomes their reality. Because God wants more for you than just simply to make it through this life. Can I tell you something else? God wants more for you than you just to simply check into heaven at the end of this life. This is not just simply something about going to heaven someday. Honey, our job is to bring heaven here. The job of the church is to bring God's presence and to allow for him to come and to touch people that have never known him like this and to allow for them to find the destiny that God's got for their lives too, no matter how old they are. See, all of us are created with destiny inside of us. And that is the thing you feel. That is the thing that sometimes drives you. It drives you to excellence in different areas of your life. Maybe you were a great athlete, or maybe you weren't. For those of us who were great athletes, we were usually satisfied with that. We usually didn't do as well in the, in the scholarly realm as we could have. Because we were getting our limelight that way. But others found that maybe they weren't great athletes, but they were very sharp thinkers. And they started excelling in that way. And some others found that they could solve problems. And some others found that they were funny or that they were, you know, charming or whatever it was. And they find their worth in that. See, but God wants to take all of those things that he has inside you and to allow you to express them in his kingdom. So that they shine and draw people to him. So that they can find what it is that you found. See, today's a massive day in the lives of, of these children that are up here. In the lives of those that are going to be baptized in a little bit. I think we, we dedicated, did you say 17 children today, honey? 17 children. Later on, we're going to baptize, it sounds like, eight so far. That number is going to be increasing. Both of these are landmarks in their lives for dedication. Dedication 
is that each child, like I said, is born with destiny. And dedication is, is an act by which the parents say that we are committed to see God's destiny fulfilled in this life that God has given us. Dedication is about setting a trajectory that brings a child into their destiny. Baptism is, is something else but similar. See, dedication is what a parent does for their child, but, but baptism is what we do for us. It's our own choice. Baptism is symbolic of coming out of the grave as Jesus did. It is, it is the, the in, envisage of, of a resurrection, of a new life. Each person being baptized today, God's spirit is in your life right now. That means he's active in you right now. That means that you have the potential. Hear me, everybody. You have the potential of seeing God's created purpose fulfilled in your life. And that is what brings fulfillment. If you, if you pursue the Lord, if you, if you follow his plan for you, you may not know where it's going to take you. Can I promise you? That I never thought was going to bring me to the, the hills of Pennsylvania. I am city boy through and through. First time I saw a bobcat in my backyard, I thought it was a Nittany lion. I found out I was wrong. But see... When you, when you sign up with Jesus, when he, he begins to take you down the path that he's got for you, you may go places you never expected to go. My wife and I have been privileged. We preached in several different countries around the world. I, I, I've, I've been places I never knew existed. I, I've eaten food I didn't know people would eat. You don't know where the adventure will take you. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. The one thing I can, I can guarantee you is if you, if you sign in with the Lord, if you put your hand in his, you allow him to bring you into your created purpose, you will never leave this life unfulfilled. You never stand at the end and wish for the things you've done. You'll never look at your wife or your children and wish things were different. Because you'll be able to stand with your head held high, not in pride or arrogance, but in knowing that I have put my trust in him. And I have known him who I have trusted. And he is well able to finish that which he has started in me. That is a, a scripture that I was quoting. You see, Jesus... You need to hear this. For anybody who doesn't really understand Christianity, I want to just give you a little nutshell of it right now. Jesus came so that we could become what we were created to be. He became what we are so that we could become what he is. Let me explain that a little bit. He became a child of humanity so that we could become children of God. He was born of a woman so that we could be born of God and fulfill our created purpose. That is why Jesus came. It is not simply to give you a ticket to heaven. It is so you can become who God made you to be. See, without Jesus, can I tell you that you can come close But only he knows who you truly are. Only he knows what you're truly created for. But the seeds of who you are are active right now. You know, it was, it was a great testimony, Rob, great testimony. You know, so many times our lives are marked by others. Some of those things are for good. Some of them are for not. So many times we, we, we bear the scars of the things that have been inflicted upon us. 
See, but all of those things, all that they do is they weigh you down and they cause you to settle for less. You just hope, most of us just hope that we can just get through. Can we just get through this day? Some of us even dream of greater things, but, but the reality is this. Only God knows what you really have inside you. But the seeds of what he has inside you right now are already bearing fruit. When I was, when I was lost as lost could be, I was a personal trainer and a coach. Some of my boys are here from when I coached here in Canton. Um, I was not lost then, Jeremiah. But um, we have, when we were kids and when, when I was a kid and, and I was involved in, in personal training and all those things, they were a shadow of ministry and people, I didn't understand it. But I would have people come to me and, and they would pay me money to help them get fit. We'd, they'd come to me with health problems or with marital problems or with just self-image problems. And they would be like, you know, um, David, I, I want to get in good shape. You know, I want to, there's been, there were, there were women who'd come and say, David, I, I need to lose 50 pounds or my husband said he's going to leave. I mean, it, it's, when you're dealing, when you're a trainer, you're dealing with so many of the, uh, of this person's deepest feelings. This person's greatest struggles. And they're entrusting you with their lives. They're entrusting you with their future. And what I didn't realize when I was a personal trainer back then was that in so many ways that was a shadow of what I do right now. That I, 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 I sit here and I come into this room and I speak to people. And I, I help you see things that God's got for you. And I show you things that, that he, he wants to bring into your life and bring healing to your soul. And, and we sit and counsel sometimes and, and we cry tears and we, we pray and allow for God to step in and bring healing into the hearts of these people that, that come. And so many of you are in this room. And we've, we've done that. But see, I didn't understand back then that... What I was doing was just a shadow of what God wanted me to do. There's good people in this room. Some of you are doing great things. I know um, there's people in this room that are serving the community, serving the elderly, helping in rehab, and other things like that. But the thing is this, sometimes if you're not really, if you don't know Jesus like this yet, those things can be very good. They can be great. But the thing is this, they're just a shadow of the rest of what God wants to bring into your life. They're just a shadow of the things that, that God really wants to come. Because he doesn't live in the shadow, he is the light. And he wants you to be the light of the world. He wants you to so shine. That people know. That people know that you're his. And just so you know, you don't all... Just because, just because it's a shadow doesn't mean you all get, you know, you all have to do this every Sunday. You don't all need a microphone. You know, my, my son-in-law, Colin, Colin has a passion for fitness. He's a CrossFit coach, and, um, and he really feels like that's part of his calling. And I think that that's true. See, God doesn't necessarily have to, to take you totally out and make you a preacher in some, like, in Zimbabwe or something crazy. The challenge I offer you today, the opportunity that I'm, I'm giving you is not to go become a missionary to a third world country. That may happen, but that's not needed if he doesn't call you there. But it is to find out what it is that he's got inside you. But I want you to hear me on this. That starts with making him your king starts with making him your Lord. Isn't it cool to have a little chorus of babies around? Just so you know, I am not distracted. Don't be distracted. That is music. That is music to the hearts of the, their parents and to the rest of us too. See, if you're 8 or 80... 
God has a plan for you. He's got something for you. If you've never really committed your life to him, he's got something for you to discover about you. And you can be big and burly like Rob, or you can be, you know, anything less than that. <laughs> or hey, anything more than that. What matters is that God's got something for you. He's got inside of you, he's got a gift, not just for the world, but for you. He wants you to find it. But I need to tell you something. Finding this destiny is a matter of choice. You have to choose it. You have to choose to allow Jesus into your life like this. You have to choose to allow for, for him to lead your life like this. One of the biggest influences in my life was my Uncle Paul. Um, Paul Soto is um, he's one of my best friends in the world. He was one of my heroes. Uh, incredible, great athlete. All-American in track at a university level. Just a wonderful, godly, and good man. But he said this to me once. He said, David, he said, where are the greatest athletes in the world? And I thought about it, and I was like, at the Olympics? He said, no. I said, the NFL? He said, no. He said, you know, David, the greatest athletes in the world are usually sitting on their porch, drinking a beer, 50 pounds overweight, talking about the good old days. You see, because so many of the greatest athletes in the world they never chose to become more than they were. They thought that it was enough to just simply settle for this. But God had so much more that he'd given them. Today I, I, I want to share a story um, about a man named Marcus Dupree. Marcus Dupree was my football hero when I was in eighth grade. Um, many men, especially in this room, and some of you really cool ladies, will know the name uh, Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, for anyone who doesn't know, is one of the greatest athletes of all time. One of the few, and in fact, the first um, two-sport two professional athletes. He played both NFL football and Major League Baseball. Uh, he's almost a legend, if not one. There's a 30 for 30 about him. When the story's about Bo Jackson, he sounds almost like Superman. He was a Heisman Trophy winner at the University of Auburn. He was uh, the first and only player ever, hear this, to home run in a Major League Baseball game, and then later that night, in the same day, score an NFL touchdown. Bo Jackson was amazing. Bo Jackson is literally a living legend, but most people do not know the name Marcus Dupree. Does anyone here know who Marcus Dupree is? My wife does. All right. Mr. Helm knows. Marcus Dupree was in the, here, and most of us won't know this, he was in the same class, same class as Bo Jackson. They were recruited the same year out of high school. Marcus Dupree um, was the most highly, hear this, the most highly recruited athlete in history at that point. There is actually a book written called um, The Courting of Marcus Dupree. That was all about how he was recruited to the University of Oklahoma. Where Bo Jackson was recruited to Auburn as a defensive end. Is this, is this, all you ladies just, it gets better in just a second. All you men are, I, I notice all the men are like leaning forward. They're like, yes, preach pastor. <laughs> See, their freshman year, Bo Jackson is at Auburn, and they actually move him from defensive end to running back because of injuries in the running back core. 
he would have never been a running back had the guys in front of him not gotten injured. On the other side, Marcus Dupree goes to the University of Oklahoma where Barry Switzer, a Hall of Fame college coach, changed his offense from a wishbone to the eye set so that he could feed the ball to Marcus Dupree more often. Bo Jackson ends up running for 829 yards that year, nine touchdowns as a true freshman. Marcus Dupree, the same year, ran for 1,144 yards, 12 touchdowns, averaged almost eight yards per carry. And that is not even including the 239 yards he gained at the Fiesta Bowl in two quarters of football. As a freshman in college, he was already second team All-American. And the world was waiting for what Marcus Dupree was going to come to be. Today, today, Bo Jackson is revered as one of the greatest running backs who ever played. Most of us who are football fans wish and dream that he had never played Major League Baseball and had all devoted all of his time to football because what could have happened is beyond our imagination. But Marcus Dupree, he never became that. You see, Marcus did not choose greatness. He chose to be influenced by those who were around him. He chose to allow for discomfort to control him. He chose to listen to those who were not concerned for his best interests, but were concerned for theirs. Because when Marcus was recruited, listen to this, he reported recently that he was offered $250,000 a year to play college football by, by alums. That was in 1982. The people who were advising him wanted a cut of the pie. They weren't worried about Marcus. They were worried about themselves. So after one storybook year, he leaves the University of Oklahoma. Ends up the next year at Southern Mississippi and plays a half season. He, he ends up leaving for what was then a new football league called the USFL, which they've just restarted again. After two years, he gets a knee injury. And he's out of football for five years. He comes back for one year, one year in the NFL. He just, hear this, he wanted more than anything from his childhood on to play in the NFL. And he worked and he worked and he worked and he begged. And he sighed for the league minimum to play football for one year in the NFL. In that year, he gained 251 yards, scored one touchdown. You see, the legacy of Marcus Dupree, who's still alive, he's 59 years old, he lives in Mississippi. The legacy of Marcus Dupree, instead of, instead of it being the accolades that we say about Bo Jackson, is that ESPN did a 30 for 30 short film on him that was called The Best That Never Was. I'm getting ready to close if the band wants to come, but I want you to hear me. Can I tell you something? Greatness is a choice. And destiny, hear this. Destiny is a destination that you have to choose to arrive at. God, today has a story, a story that he wants to write, that you are the main character, that you, you are the one who, who fulfills the reason, the, the purpose, the plan that God created you to live. 
No matter where you are, you may be close. You may be moving in the shadow of your calling. You may be doing things that, that resonate with the depth of your soul. But I want you to hear me. When I was successful, when I was a personal trainer and training millionaires and professional athletes, when I'm making at times $50 an hour back in the early 90s, which was a lot of money back then, when I was moving forward and respected in all the Milwaukee area as one of the up-and-coming coaches and trainers of athletes in the area, nobody knew. Nobody knew the, the deep sadness that was in my soul. Nobody, nobody knew that, that there were times that I would just, when I was alone in quiet moments, that I would sometimes, not often, but that I would sometimes just, just close the door of my bedroom and, and lay on my bed and sob for hours. I remember one time I was over at my girlfriend's house and she said, what's wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. See, but inside of me, Though I was being successful on the outside, and though I was in the shadow of my calling, I was not fulfilling what I was made for. And, and the weights and the pains of this life, they dragged me into places where the only word to describe it is depression. And there's times that, that your, the ache of your heart will be so real. But I want to tell you this. I want you to hear me on this. There is more to life than what you're living if you do not know Jesus yet. And even if you know him, maybe you were going to, to church as a child. Or maybe you just simply, you know, went to Sunday school or whatever your story is. Maybe you committed to him when you were 10 like I did but then walked long and hard away from him for a long time. Whatever your situation, maybe you've never heard his name. Maybe you don't know the story at all. What I want to tell you is this. You are still shaped with purpose. Inside of you is a destiny that God has that, that will never die. It will never go away. And for the rest of your life, you will carry the seeds of that destiny Whether you fulfill it or not. But I want to tell you that God wants something more for you. Than you could ever imagine. Jeremiah 29 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you says the Lord. They are plans for good. And not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. For anybody in this room that's never really committed your life to Jesus, or maybe you've committed your life, but you, you thought that that was what you did on Sunday, and, and, and you know, Monday through Saturday, was, that, that was your space. God has more for you than a weekend religion. He has a destiny that he created you for. Only Jesus knows why you were made with exactly the gifts and talents you have. Are you ready to find out what that is? Are you ready to stop just touching parts of it or just living in the shadow of it? But are you ready to, to step into it and to find that he's got the answers that you never, never even knew you needed? If you want to do that today, if you want to start this journey, it starts just with me introducing you to my best friend. He's also the king of the universe. He's also the prince of peace. Scripture also says he's the mighty God. If you want that today, 
I'm just going to invite you to meet him. And, and we meet him through prayer. So I'm going to pray, and you're going to pray with me if you want to meet Jesus. And so we're going to do that right now. If you, if you want that, just pray with me for a second. Everybody else in the room, if you already know the Lord, pray with me. Pray for those that are making a decision right now. Pray for those that are deciding that they want Jesus and that they want the destiny created for them right now. If you're ready to pray with me, for those of you who want to meet Jesus, just pray these words in your heart or, and with your lips as I pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of everything I've done wrong. I'm sorry. And I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to be my king, my Lord, my savior, my best friend. I want you to take me to my destiny. I ask you these things right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to know something. You may look nothing like me, but we just became brother and sister. We just became family because you just were born into the kingdom. So, with that said, we're going to sing. If you want to stand. If anybody in this room, if, if what God, if you've received Christ, if you just prayed that prayer with me, you just prayed it. And, and you feel like you want to get baptized, you can go out that door. I'm going to go out that door in just a second. And we're going to, we are, I invite you to get baptized. If you don't want to get baptized, it's cool. Stand, let's sing. But no matter what, guys, no matter what, I want you to hear me. If you never come back to this church, if you never hear a message like this ever again, I want you to never forget this one thing. Jesus came as a man so that you as a man or woman could become what he is, a child of God. That is why he came. Father, by the power of the name of Jesus, I declare your blessing on all of these people. I ask you, Lord God, to lead them into more and more and more of you. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. How beautiful.